Ordinary Extraordinary Activism. The Toronto Disability Pride March demonstrates that we can all come together for political organizing, even if only for an afternoon. As was the case in these past protests and marches, the Toronto Disability Pride March is also about disability and mad politics, about resisting the oppression that comes along with our unique identities, minds, and bodies. Kevin Jackson. Okay, first of all, you have to have a group that, that want to do it. And once you have a group, then almost anything is possible. But you have to have the desire to do it. And even if the money is not there. Kevin is sitting in an armchair with windows behind him. He is wearing a black shirt and sweater. Yeah, it's a lot of people that, that we know through uh, academics and through activism. Kevin is sitting behind a white table at the front of a lecture room next to a woman. It can be just personal um, fighting for their own right to access a certain resource. It's community. It's community. So we, we know of people through uh, activist events. So we all, we, we're looking for people who are, who are doing things in the community. So it's not really through, through just through university or through, um, through online recruiting. It's not nothing like that. It's people that we know, people that we, uh, we, we kind of trust. A crowd of people gathers as Kevin hands out signs. So what exactly did I do in my life? Well, I told stories. Other people. And the sharing of stories is important. Mm -hmm. Through storytelling, we learn of other perspectives. Would you like a matter? Would you like a matter? Mm -hmm. It is big. Yeah. <laughs> I think in the past, disability pride has really referred to very specific groups or, or individuals of people with certain dis, uh, experiences of disability. What we wanted to do is expand that to include everybody. So there's not one group that's, that's overrepresented. There's no roadmap for what we're doing. It's just we, we got together. I mean, after the first one, which was in 2011, that was during Occupy. There were a lot of marches going on at that time. Almost anyone could just have a march then. So it, it was organized, but we had a lot. There was a great turnout then. Um, because it was just a lot of stuff was going on. But to do it after that, when, when Occupy was over, it's we, had no, we had no one to tell us what to do. We just, we just did it. We come together as disabled and mad people, along with their allies, in a peaceful and collaborative space in order to realize our potential for political organizing as members of a greater coalition of activists. We also recognize the march is about is to actually get people together to say, okay, we are together. Do we want to take the next step? And I think we've uh, encouraged some great discussions that perhaps weren't going on before. But when you get different people from different experiences of disability together, there is the potential to do great political change. We have tape as well if anyone wants to tape aside for their chair. I think we, we don't. Need Okay, we don't have TV anymore. Where's the banner? Can you ask for who's got the banner? <laughs> they have it? Oh, perfect, perfect. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Very good. Marshall's ready. And we have and we have to keep slow, remember to keep everybody together. So we gotta go slow. As you're walking as you're going doing the march, it's it's wonderful, it's spectacular as well, but it's just that, that moment when everything starts and it's going, it's just happening. You know, I don't know if anyone can feel what that feels like, it's, unless you've done it. It's just an amazing thing. It actually happened, it's, it's shocking. The crowd moves through the streets. On our backs! Which is even more Which is even faster. Ain't no power like the power of the people, because the power of I didn't see myself doing it. I just thought, oh, these are the ones that always did it. They, they were doing it, and I was just learning about it. I didn't think I could do it. I got just tired of the barriers that I was facing. And I just thought, what can I do? I don't, these people, they're the experts. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. 
And then I got, I got sick and tired, and I got upset, and then I started doing something about it. So I did a bit of mad activism, and that just pushed me a little bit, of, a little bit forward. Choices. Our Our minds. Our minds. It's frustrating because I just can't hear them. No. I found that I could do it myself. So it wasn't just these these um, these professors. These that were the only experts. We could go out and do it ourselves, and we did it. We, I went out myself, and I did it. We're about bringing us together. We already know we're diverse. We, we live it every day of our lives. Our diversity is, is, is ingrained in us. The march is about showing we can do it on our own. We don't need your help. So that's why, in, in this case, allies is, is not a good thing. That's why I don't put School of Disability Studies as an ally. I put them as a co-partner. But it's, it's next to impossible to get to understand um, what disability is about and finding a solution without doing activism. That's the praxis part of, of disability activism. I mean, there's the, the, the theory, and then there's the actual doing of it. It's not, one, it's not one or the other. You have to do both. And that's a component of feminist uh, 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 activism as well, is actually getting involved. Learning about it is actually very easy. Doing it is where everything comes together. But thank you for the great work, everybody. Principal Investigator Melanie Panich, Co-Investigators Chelsea Jones and Kim Collins, Student Alumni Advisory Committee Members Marsha Ryan, Carolyn Lee Jones, Nicole Meehan, Pauline Mwangi, and Emily Delbecci, Transcriber Ursula Lipinski, Videographer and Editor Jonathan Balaz. Special thanks Paris Master McRae and Ryerson University's School of Disability Studies, Jesse McLaren, Gaston Andre Palavacino. Audio descriptions, Nicole Meehan, Natalie Rose. ASL interpretation, Gloria Brofoglio, Ronald Dans. Participants, Eliza Chandler, Kevin Jackson, Melanie Moore, Fran Odette, Barry Smith. Funded by Ryerson University's Learning and Teaching Enhancement Fund. Copyright 2016.